The world of finance has long been considered a man's world. Men have always dominated the financial field, but women in the industry say females are actually perfectly suited for working in finance. As solid communicators, women have an edge when it comes to building personal relationships with clients. Plus, as the global market expands, women with fluency in foreign languages have a distinct advantage. I always encourage women to consider careers in financial services. There's so much opportunity from sales and marketing, product development, relationship management, and client work. People often think about banking jobs, they think, gee, you could be a teller, or I thought maybe I'd be stuck in an office doing spreadsheets all day. And I think my career is testament to the fact that this is an incorrect stereotype. Just check my frequent flyer miles and my passport and you'll see I have not been spending a lot of time sitting still. Susan Livingston is a trailblazer for women in finance. She actually fell into the financial world and then fell in love with it. In the 1980s, when many European countries were considered emerging markets, banks were actively seeking out staff with foreign language skills. As an avid student of international cultures, Susan fit the bill and was promptly sent to Italy to assist her firm's custodian bank as they struggled to function in Italy's new stock market. There, Susan's relationship management and intercultural skills won over her Italian colleagues and her reputation and career began to flourish. I had had some experience in Europe. I had lived there twice. And so when I went in, I went really at a more junior level. And over time, I built trust with the people there. And they allowed me out of what they called the foreigner's room to really sit side by side with them. Since that first trip to Italy, Susan has helped her bank build relationships in new markets in Spain, Portugal, Indonesia, Poland, and Russia. Her career has taken her around the globe over the span of 30 years, and her passport has the stamps to prove it. When I look back over my career in finance over the past 30 years, I'm amazed at the spread of capitalism around the world. Coming of age in the Cold War era, I never imagined there would be a stock exchange in Russia, in China, in Eastern Europe, let alone Latin America, Mideast, and Africa. When I think about all the friendships and contacts I've made around the world, how many countries I've visited, I think I've visited over 50 countries around the world and have really been able to see things and explore and learn a lot about myself, but also about foreign cultures. The trend of emerging markets shows no sign of stopping. The U.S. share of world market capitalization is shrinking nearly 20% in the past two decades. As new large markets like India and China emerge, Susan says there's huge opportunity for growth among women entering the financial field. When my grandmother worked on Wall Street in the 1920s, she actually had to hide her engagement from her co-workers because in those days, they thought a married woman was taking the job of a man. She later founded and worked in her own financial printing firm on Wall Street until the age of 75. So she was a great role model. But I think today, women have a lot of opportunity and have benefited from many of the women, the brave women who preceded us in fighting for various things so that we could have more opportunity. Women have thrived in industries once considered off limits. The field of banking and finance is no different. And thanks to pioneers like Susan Livingston, the road to success has never been easier for women to navigate. Susan Livingston was one of the first female partners at the esteemed privately owned bank of Brown Brothers Harriman. BBH is the oldest and largest private bank in the United States and has employed many notable figures, including Prescott Bush and Alan Greenspan. Founded in 1818, Today, Brown Brothers Harriman provides investor services, corporate banking services, mergers and acquisitions advisory, investment management, and wealth management. I think Brown Brothers Harriman was one of the earliest banks to recognize women and to really appreciate their contribution early on. I never felt as if my contribution was in any way judged by virtue of my gender. Today we have four female partners at Brown Brothers Harriman, and I'm sure in the future we'll have many more. Brown Brothers Harriman has always been at the forefront of international investing. BBH was one of the first U.S. banks to enter the global custody business in 1963, when the firm's major American clients began to acquire non-U.S. securities. 
They were on the front lines of what has turned into a major shift in capitalization, foreign markets holding larger and larger shares of the global pie. I think BBH has been successful in global custody because part of our mission statement is to help our clients meet their goals. And then we're very well aligned with our largest clients who are global asset managers and banks. And also BBH has an international history. So we were founded as a bank financing international trade and we now benefit from that with the globalization trend. We have nine international offices and about 65% of our revenue comes from outside the United States. We've been top rated in the industry surveys and I think that we have a very nice combination of excellence in client service and in our technology. And that makes a big difference in global custody. Brown Brothers Harriman, trust in partnership, shared goals, shared success.